Howdy folks, today is a tale of two stories. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Monday. <laughs> New tool day, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also the website where the tool came from, I think both are kind of important uh, elements here. So uh, let's get into it. As I was saying, there's there's two names today here. Uh, first off, you're gonna if you're looking around for something like a 3D printer, one of the places you could be looking at is geekbuying.com. It's the website is the name just like it sounds. It's a place to go and look for, say, a consumer grade 3D printer that's gonna be a good price. That said, they sent me over uh, something that uh, I don't have, and I've never had it in this shop, and it's really strange because uh, there are two. In the last five years, there's probably two printers that you will hear the name over and over again. Uh, Prusa being obviously the one name you're going to hear, especially when it comes to uh, print farming and all that. But the other name you'll hear that seems like everybody seems to have one is the Ender 3. And today we have the latest in the Enders series. Yeah, the Ender. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Right here. Yeah, the Ender. Yeah, the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Yeah, in the Ender 3 series, this is the newest one. But I gotta thank Lindy over at geekbuying.com for sending this over to us because we didn't have one. And I really was sort of scratching my head, why the Ender 3? I see a lot of it in 3D print farming. I see a lot of people referring to it. A lot of people get them and seem to keep them even though they, they seem to swap out some of their other machines, but the Ender seems to stay. And there's reasons for it, and I guess that's part of what we need to talk about today because uh, the Ender 3, uh, some of the features surprised me because I really didn't realize that the Ender 3 had come along this far, I guess. And it's got certain things that I've always looked for in printers. This one has it, and it has a good price. So I like that combination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so we get the box open, and there's uh, quite a bit of parts. Let's lay the parts on the table for a minute. We'll take a quick look and then we'll throw it together. Apparently this should take less than, I don't know, an hour? I don't, I really don't know. Okay, so I've unloaded the box and here it is. It's really, there's almost nothing here. I knew this was gonna be really quick to put together because everybody seems to be pretty much in that form, but there's features and things here we need to get into. But anyways, there's just a base and a top. You have your uh, extruder here and uh, also a touch screen control package here that's really gonna be nice on the front here, which is really a good upgrade too because uh, Creality used to use an old uh, digital knob thing, but anyways, the simplicity of just putting this thing together is great. It's a, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that a lot, everybody seems to be doing that these days. It's, you know, you almost, you know, plug and play kind of thing and, and we're close to that. There, we've got very little, you gotta put this up plug a few cables in, got some basic hardware here to work with and some tools, and we're good to go. So let's get this bad boy up and together and let's talk about all these crazy features. So about a half hour of uh, build time involved. Uh, it was really, this. actually assembly is only this page, this page, and I think, yeah, even when you get to this one here, it just talks about uh, hooking up the wiring and stuff. I think the wiring took as long as it did to put the hardware together. There really wasn't much to assemble, so you know, again, you know, I gotta hand it to Creality, they've always been good that way. It's got the magnetic bed, but the big feature here for me is this hot end is really cool because it's an all metal hot end. That, okay, the Ender 3 uh, S1 Pro has a modeling dimensions of 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 270 millimeters, so she's a good size. She's a modeling technology, of course, of FDM. It's a single nozzle. The nozzle, by the way, is 0.4. It's a standard nozzle. You pretty much see that on any 3D printer. The accuracy is 0.2 millimeter, so it's very good. Printing material, PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS. Uh, that's what's in the manual, but I can tell you right now, also ASA and uh, I believe uh, carbon nylon is also another one that's on the uh, list there for things. It also supports formats of STL. OBJ and AMF, which is great. Print, printing method is uh, memory card, offline printing, or online printing. Yeah, and also, let's see, slicing software is 3 Creator Slicer, Repeater Host, Acura Simplified 3D. Voltage, you can get this at 120 or 240. Uh, that's one thing you need to really check before you uh, start the machine. Make sure you're set for the right voltage in your country. Power total. 
350 watts altogether. Again, not bad. Now the hot bed temperature is up to 100 Celsius, and that's pretty typical of most machines. But the nozzle temperature, okay, she can go up 300 uh, degrees Celsius. I've heard 310, but okay, yeah. Uh, it has the resume printing function and filament detection, of course, auto bed leveling, and it'll work with PC Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux with a print speed of up to 150 millimeters a second. Of course, the recommended, of course, being 50 millimeters. But the features just say something for itself. For the price of the uh, Ender, you're looking at a a pretty darn good machine overall for the specs. Another feature on the Ender 3 which I really love. Look at this. Full size SD card. It also has a U it has a USB hook up here, but it looks like it's I'm gonna say Thunderbolt 3 by the looks of that. But that's or Thunder uh USB C I guess we call that these days. Another strange feature is this little right here, the little, little LED built in the top, a little light bar at the front here. But it's a nice touch. On another note, this is an odd feature, but this one comes with a nice little parts drawer underneath it from Creality. So that's, you know, that's uh, pretty cool. And probably keep all your little uh, tools and stuff in there. One of the other th features that I really like is the extruder overall. Ender did, <laughs> Creality, did a nice job on this one because it's a direct drive, which I really like. All metal hot end, of course, and also this is a nice metal release right here for taking filament in and out. So it's it, the the machine has a lot of the upgraded features that you should look for in a nice modern 3D printer at a good price. Next feature I got to point out too is these wheels uh, for adjusting when you're leveling the bed. Ender Creality put nice big fatty wheels on here, so it, it makes it somewhat easier to get the bed up and down and leveled out. Nah, that's a cool thing. But you also have an adjustment knob here and here for setting the tension for your, your X and your Y. So that's a that's really a very good item. But there's one something else in this machine you can't see right now, but at the back of the machine, it has dual uh, Z rods up and down. So excellent control. Next item is this. The Unlike some, a lot of 3D printers, I really love putting the old filament up on top. I really, that's to me, that's like a great place to put it. In this case, it's really a natural place to put it. And also, of course, your little detector here for filament run out. But the uh, people over there at Creality came up with a nice clip that locks up the top here and allows your spool. And it actually, this is on the fat side, so your spool kind of rolls nice. And, and this is rolling too. So if there's no friction or anything, you know, drag back here. And of course, it directly feeds right straight down at this point to the uh, extruder. So again, this is a nice design. I like this particular setup. So if you're just getting into 3D printing or you watch shows such as, uh, I think, was it 3D Printing Nerd or Angus down there at Maker's Muse or even Uncle Jesse's uh, channel there with it, you'll all hear every one of them and any one of them mention the Ender, Ender 3, they'll always mention it. And the reason is it's a really great machine for a low price. And the best place to get it right now that I've been told is geekbuying.com. They have a whole string of 3D printers, but this is one of the ones they carry. It's the Ender 3 S1 Pro. And it has all the features that, you know, a good print, you know, for a good printer. And it's not just a starter kit. Uh, if you've had printers in the past, you might want to say upgrade and go with something like this. I've got other printers here that sell for about $200, but they don't have the features and the capability that this one has. Another place where uh, I've been seeing a lot of these and thinking about it over time was uh, a lot of the printer farms. Uh, I've seen them on YouTube and they're talking and a lot of times in the background you'll see you know a stack of Ender 3s in there. And it, it sort of says something about the machine because there are just so many of them sometimes and they're just, it just seems like everybody's either got one, getting one, or they have multiple, you know, Ender 3. And I, myself, I, it's kind of really weird because like I got, I've had Creality machines, but not the Ender 3. I've had the CR, the CR10, the CR uh, Max, you know, that kind of thing. And I've also got uh, a bunch of machines in right now but I've never actually owned an Ender 3. And I have never really thought about it until uh, a couple of months ago when I was watching some of these different printing farms and they were like, you know, and I've got five or 10, you know, Ender 3s here and also CNC Kitchen. I'm trying to think of some of the other people that I watch, but they've all mentioned the Ender 3 at some point and you're like, wonder if I should be buying one of those machines, you know? Uh, 
So it's not just a beginner's machine. It is something that you can either upgrade to or it's a machine that you can add to your uh, collection if you're getting like me where I've got, I think it's eight or nine machines in here right now. Number just keeps going up. And uh, the Ender 3 is a great machine and I've heard so much about it. It's gonna take me weeks to run, you know, more tests through or whatever. Right now we're doing uh, the uh, famous Creality Cat that is on the file when you get an Ender or any Creality machine, you'll always find the file in there for the cat. And there's an old joke way back, you know, I think it was 2016 when uh, Creality CR10 came out. They had this file for the little cat and about halfway through the print, the printer would knock the head off the cat just before it finished. And this went on and on for quite a while. It actually became a sort of an inside joke for everybody that owned a Creality uh, machine. The, the, the famous cat with the head, you know, knocked off. Uh, there was all kinds of cartoons and everything sort of made about the whole thing. So it was it was actually pretty funny. And when we were printing this today, that memory came back to me and I thought maybe I should take this and just, you know, cut the cat's head off just so it's, you know, yep, it's a Creality machine. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong. Creality makes great machines, so don't get me wrong. Uh, there was a problem they found, I think it was in the code, in the G-code, where something went wrong and, you know, the cat's head would get, get knocked off. I think it was even, they found it was a disgruntled employee that wrote the code, snuck it in there or something. <laughs> I love it, I love it, yeah. Anyway, this is, this is a good one to buy if you're shopping for a 3D printer, maybe your first printer. This is well worth the money and it's a machine that has stands. It has some standards within the industry that this thing shows up all over the place. And you'll be confident to sit back and watch your favorite YouTube show about 3D printing or something. And you know the guy is going to, sooner or later, he'll mention, oh yeah, and I've got, you know, blah, 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 Ender 3s back here. Always, you know, wow, it's crazy. But it's, but it's a good machine uh, for some of the features I just showed you. The uh, touch screen is something sort of new. This hasn't always been the case. So this is a really nice upgrade that, uh, I sort I like it. It's it's you know I've always enjoyed the touch screens. There's been a number of uh, 3D printers that have come out with touch screens in the past, and I've always thought, man, this is the way to go because it's it's just it's just a nice interface with you and the machine. Uh, the other thing was the cable, and that's where we're going to uh, that's where we're going to come down on Creality a little bit. The cable management is uh, it's better than it used to be but it could still use a little improvement. One of the things that it really did was the cable for the heating for the bed. That used to be notoriously a problem and it still is with a lot of machines because the cable bends a little bit as the bed is sliding back and forth. That heating uh, with the uh, cable back there gets warm and eventually the whole thing snaps and you know you got a problem. But uh, Creality went through the trouble and they've got a super unbelievable amount of you know nice cable here that's sheathed into a nice clip that's supported so there's very little you know going on so that hopefully again it's something that's designed to last a very very long time which uh, is what sort of you know printer farms kind of run after is stuff like that the uh, flat cable up here is doing its job it's okay I'm not real crazy about it I would kind of like to see the old chain cable thing that uh, for man management but this is uh, it's doing the try. It's doing the job. So like, hey, you know, cool. Then getting on the next note too is, of course, there's a warranty card from Creality that you get with, you know, their machines anyway. So it's just, yeah, it's just a little bit of icing on the cake, as they say. Uh, right now, this model is so smooth looking, I can't even see the layer lines on it. So that's kind of crazy. But yeah, that's probably one of the reasons that a lot of people like these. Yeah, I can't even make out the layer lines. This actually, this model does not even look like it's 3D printed because it's, such, it's got such a smooth finish on it right now. Shiny, of course. I'm, I'm running uh, some silk stuff through right now, but it's... Uh, and this is one of the worst problematic PLAs uh, that I have, of course. You know, and I thought, ah, well, throw it at the ender. And sure enough, the ender is uh, handling it no problem at all. But it's coming out like super smooth. There's there's virtually no layer lines. It looks like almost like a smooth kind of finish almost to it. So it's looking really good. There was a fellow at a printer farm that told me uh, one of the reasons he uses the uh, Enders was because he has certain products that he needs a real good finish on, and he said this machine will deliver. So again, you know, it's a just another selling point to me. 
guys, gals, uh, man, I gotta get out of here, huh? Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools, and please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll put some links down below for this stuff, and hopefully we'll see you Thursday. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out.